wonderful to be here, and I absolutely love today's topic of reimagining PR for building business. Um, as, we, as we've seen from this impressive case, case study that was just given to us, um, truly creative ideas really can hit, help businesses to drive results. And when I first started in this business, the PR world was all about getting a lot of press coverage for a person, for a brand, for a product, for an issue. And don't get me wrong, the power of earned media is still incredibly important. But the world of communications is totally transforming. And doing so in a way that integrates all form of media, paid, earned, shared, and owned. And it is content driven and ultimately social by design. As we know, we are dealing with a fundamental change to our industry, and one that in 2006, the economists likened to a media revolution, where the era of mass media is giving way to one of personal and participatory media, which will profoundly change not only the media industry, but the society as a whole. And digital and social are changing communications channels from control broadcast, where we earned our placements, to open and network channels where the messages are not only earned, they can be shared by all. And with these changes, no longer is it assumed that paid channels are owned by advertising or that earned channels are necessarily the domain of public relations. And never before has there been so much potential for really fluid marketing plans. And never before is there more opportunity for inside-led PR ideas to play across all of these platforms for maximum impact. Because the consumer is more connected than ever before, and touch points with brands have been much more experiential. We consume more differently, and we trust our peers more than companies. While the Forrester study focused on the US market, findings from our own digital Influence Index in 2011, conducted with Harris Interactive, showed consistent results across the board. Trust is shifting, with social and, me and digital uh, channels indexing as the most trusted. The top four recommendations from other consumers or their peers, brand sites, email, online opinions, and then followed by those that are traditional, newspaper, magazine, TV, and radio. So to look beyond funnel and peer Funnel-inspired push marketing, companies must invest in vehicles that let marketers interact with the consumers. And what it means is that marketing is changing. Everything now is driven by the context and by the consumer. And lots of brands are struggling to adapt to the changes the ways our, the people are engaging with them and how messages are consumed. Traditional models of marketing have been turned on their head. Creative leadership is now paramount in communications. And to reach connected and inspire consumers who decide what they want and when requires a new kind of marketing attitude. Social, influencer, digital, and traditional marketing mar uh, communications all melded together. So despite all the change in the media channels, content remains king. And PR has always ruled that domain. And so it goes that insight-led PR ideas are at the heart of some of the most effective campaigns that are happening around the globe. And that puts us in a really interesting space because in this networked world, one could argue that the consumers are now in control. And we know that we are naturally social. So here are a few stats from the 2011 Insights Consulting Social Media Around the World Report. There are seven billion people around the world, including 2 billion internet users, and more than 1 billion of them use social networks. More than 400 million people use Facebook daily, and of the two-thirds of Kiwis who use social networks, 96% of those are on Facebook. 50% of social network users are connected to brands. Offline brand experiences, not traditional online advertisements, are the main online conversation starters. Mobile social networking is also on the rise, as 38% of internet users have a smartphone, and they are much more intensive users of social networks than the people without smartphones. So as the communications environment is changing, with content playing an increasingly central, powerful role, we're entering an era where social content and no longer just relationships or messages 
builds brands, alliances, moves audiences, shapes opinions, changes behavior, and builds business. And brands are not only taking notice, they're seeing how it affects their top lines, as evidenced by this quote from the chief marketeer at P&G. And in late 2009, Mark Pritchard um, declared that he wanted to reach 3 billion consumers with digital in the next three years. And he committed to having breakthrough digital plans across all of P&G's 43 brands in the coming year. This year, their CEO, Bob McDonald, said that P&G would be shifting more of their $9 billion marketing spend to digital and mobile advertising from traditional TVCs. And just last week, Pritchard said that digital marketing was no longer a trendy use of tech for tech's sake, but instead the way P&G aimed to engage people real time and build brand because it creates greater loyalty, more purchases across categories, and more sales at lower costs. Which is why everything needs to be social by design. And as we look at integrated communications, we see that that content is right at the core, the right stories and ideas connecting audiences and driving results. As the creators of content, it is our responsibility to develop magnetic content that resonates in this new environment. We know that the value of our efforts are much more effective when integrated than when executed separately. And the voices we have as marketers are more varied than ever. The digital explosion has given birth to never before conceived of media channels. And these channels continue to evolve. Be, to evolve. So what can we do to stay ahead of the curve? Three things. Number one, drive integration through insects-led ideas. And this is where PR really can take a lead. Two, tell the right stories through sound content strategy. And three, to deliver them across all channels, including paid, earned, shared, and owned. At Fleischmann Pillar, we refer to this as PESO, paid, earned, shared, and owned. Paid. Today, paid media channels go far beyond the traditional one-way TV and print ads, or even online banner ads, to include paid spokespeople, funded partnerships, special events, and sponsorships. Earned media is revered for building credibility and preference for brands. However, as a result of the changing landscape in media, the reduction of the number of traditional media outlets, and the rise of citizen journalism, earned has taken on a whole new meaning. Online reviews, blogs, uh, and four square mayors are now considered credible authorities. On share, today the FIFA World Cup is not just the world's leading sporting event and a corporate sponsorship opportunity. It is a shared media channel for Coca-Cola to engage with consumers and promote its brand. And Facebook is not just a community for friends to connect. It has become the preferred platform for Ford to launch its 2011 Explorer. And part of the effectiveness of these channels is their novelty and ability to satisfy consumers' appetite for new ways to connect. Owned. Why rely on other media channels when you can own your own and control your own message? It's hard to say no. It's a question that more and more companies are facing and answering for themselves. This type of media covers, crit covers critical assets a company owns as their website, their annual report, and marketing materials. And every own touch point is a key to delivering the brand. And many are choosing to bypass third-party channels in, fav in favor of owning their own message distribution channel. When you look at this new paradigm of media, in the center is that big idea where it has always been, the make or break of a great campaign. To demonstrate the true end benefit of the PESO model, I'm going to illustrate five common challenges how FH brought insights in an integrated approach to solving them. Starting with business issue number one. How to stir up a fresh wave of interest and attention when you have absolutely no new product to introduce. And you've got to work with what you've got and come at it from a whole new direction and shedding light from a completely different angle. That was the challenge given our Blue Current team in Tokyo. Our client, Adidas, aimed to capitalize on the growing popularity of running in Japan and to differentiate themselves as the running authority among the fast-growing group of new runners. And they faced some challenges. 
First of all, the number of runners was picking up at a breathtaking pace, increasing 12% in 2010 to 26 million nationwide. And that's about one-fifth of the entire country. But Adidas ranked a mere fourth overall in sales of running gear. So how to pull ahead? To answer, they started with research on the nation's running habits. And most of the new runners were joining because it was part of a very big and tre trendy cultural phenomenon. That meant that 80% of the market, the vast majority, were confused about the mechanics of running, even sho choosing the right running shoe. And they, and, and, uh, uh, yeah, choosing the right running shoes and knowing the right techniques. So like very many fads, after a determined pursuit to make it part of their lifestyle, their interest wanes. So therein lies the need and the opportunity to fill it. And that is how a whole new category of runners was coined, meet so runners. And they became the heart of an integrated campaign to expressly answer the demands of this specific segment and to grow market share. It combined traditional and social media like Twitter, an online license certification program, a launch event with promotions, third-party um, athletes as advisors, and sponsorships. <coughs> All of this was social by design to embrace and engage the newly classified Mizo runners. And here's more of the story. Running is very trendy in Japan with some 26 million enthusiasts. Our challenge was to propel Adidas from its number four position among the field of major competitors with a unique concept, personalizing Adidas products and services for the individual runner. To do this, we believed a persistent theme was necessary, and the key was in identifying the issues many runners face. So we developed an internet survey that found almost 80% of runners had several issues, and most were simply following the popular running trend. They had no clear goals, and so were unable to make product decisions based on personal objectives. We defined this major market segment as MESO, or aimless runners. All promotional efforts then pushed one persistent message. Adidas running products and services can rescue Meso runners. Well-known Japanese athletes and trainers were recruited to articulate the issues facing runners and to position the Adidas brand as the solution. Finally, we developed an online certification program and linked to Twitter and other social networks so runners could share their running experiences. Adidas then announced our survey findings to coincide with their launch of special running facilities, real-time coaching tools, and the certification program, all based on the theme of rescuing Meso runners. Media coverage has driven unique advertising value and created new momentum for the Adidas brand, boosting year-on-year -year sales by 120%. By liberating Japan's Meso runners, the Adidas brand is now synonymous with motivating the individual runner and supporting Japan's running lifestyle. Most importantly, sales of Adidas running shoes and apparel rose 120% over the prior year, and registration on their running website increased 150% in the first <coughs> half of the year. So they started a dialogue that they could continue. And this campaign was conducted in partnership with TVWA Hapahoto uh, and was named as a finalist in the most recent Con uh, Lions International Creativity of, uh, Festival of Creativity in the PR category. Next, I'm going to share two examples from automotive brands, one in the U.S. and the other one in China. They share a common problem, how to make an age-old brand appear to a younger generation, one that has a mindset shaped in the new media world. The first GM, it's challenge to engage younger consumers with the GM and Chevy brands, with, to warm them up, especially to the new line of Chevy vehicles. Instead of trying to attract um, them to something Chevy, Chevy went to them, seeking out unique festival experiences that resonate with younger consumers, but still stay true to their brand. The platform GM selected for the third year in a row was a super sponsor for the South by Southwest Festival, which just was held this month. Um, the roster of events includes cutting edge music, film, interactive technologies, and conference panel discussions every March in Austin, Texas. 
Over 49,000 young trend watchers come to soak up the amazing content and experiencing great network opportunities. As CNN put it, South by Southwest is considered one of the most influential happenings on the annual cultural calendar. It was a perfect fit for GM. On GM's agenda at the festival was to accelerate awareness and appreciation among younger drivers with the newest generation of Chevy vehicles, specifically the electric Chevy Cruze and Chevy Bolt, among others. Now, getting through the crowds at South by Southwest can be really tough, so they offered complimentary Catch a Chevy shovel service to festival growers, goers. Uh, the integrated mobile campaign incorporated an offline component via GoWalla, which is a location-based application. Attendees were able to take free rides around Austin in Chevy Cruze compact sedans and Equinox crossovers. They also used an augmented reality iPhone application with QR codes affixed to Chevy vehicles to easily look up Chevy information. They also set up a Chevy Bolt recharge lounge and invited people to come and chill out, recharge themselves and, and their mobile devices, and this was extremely popular. Chevy also engaged their target audiences with walking tours, scavenger hunts, social media channel promotions, virtual sample of car features, and interactive mobile experiences. And you can see some of it here for yourself. Hey, Cheryl Lazar, Chevrolet, coming to you from Austin, Texas. Want to see what Chevy was up to at South by Southwest 2011? Well, take a look. Seats on Seats metric alone, 
Uh, this campaign earned GM recognition on the, in an ad age story as the festival's biggest marketing winner for pairing new technology with innovative brand positioning to enhance the customer experience. And Ad Week just posted analysis of the social conversation during South by Southwest Interactive. And according to the article, Samsung saw the most mentions, but Chevrolet was crowned the love winner, uh, meaning Chevy generated the most positive <coughs> buzz. So this peso model sponsorship is a very, very important strategic piece of the overarching goal to position Chevrolet as an innovative and forward-looking company. So next we're going to move to China, when Mercedes was preparing to launch its smart brand. And to set the scene for you, Mercedes-Benz concluded 2009 with its highest sales ever recorded in its 23 years in China, making it the fastest growing luxury art auto brand in the world's biggest auto market. Mercedes has obviously built enormous brand recognition in China, but its urban mobility solution, smart cars positioning and target audience was altogether different. So how did Smart end up playing such a big role in the 2009 success story? Well, Smart actually took the market by storm and began flying off the shelves even before they rolled off the, the assembly line. Behind the buzz was a three-pronged PR-led integrated queso campaign. And in China, like everywhere, the way consumers receive and consume information that influences purchase decisions has changed dramatically. The internet has become for many the primary vehicle for sharing information. And at the same time, the influence of traditional media has waned. And print, TV, and billboard advertising promotion in China, as you can imagine, is a very expensive one-way means of communications versus the interactive two-way dialogue that the online channels provide. As, Michelle, as Mercedes niche brand is distinguished by its environmentally friendly characteristics and modern appeal, Smart was positioned as an icon to define the lifestyle of the new generation of China's young urban population. So the pre-launch campaign kicked off about six months prior to the Smart introduction. And it featured a clever design competition held in partnership with Sina.com, which is China's biggest internet portal. And people were invited to think inside the box and to design a cube approximately the size of a real smart car, about three meters by three meters by three meters. Um, under the design themes, urban creativity, amazing agility, eco-friendly and stress-free safety. And thousands of entries poured in. Online voting was popular and web pages exceeded about 91 million. The top designs were reviewed by a panel of judges representing the tops in their fields in design in China from fashion and art to architecture and interior design. They were well-known le legends and, and key influencers. The top 10 winners were awarded a smart car, and they got to have their designs produced for a major traveling exhibition that kicked off around the time of the launch, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, the design competition helped drive traffic to the website we created featuring social networking and an interactive platform for creativity, games, and ideas exchange. Over 10,000 people registered on the site where they could also access all the technical and feature information and pre-register for the smart vehicles themselves. A smart web channel provided information about smart reservations, product activity, city life, etc. And smart would also send mobile messages to their smart fans to wish them a happy Valentine's Day or in honor of Chinese New Year. And we had a news bureau, advertorials, e-newsletters, and press releases that rounded out the whole peso mix. And of course, all of this involved an enormous amount of content creation across multiple platforms. A national roadshow to 12 Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities kicked off the pre-order period. A smart vending machine, smart, uh, smart vending machine, a smart car inside of it, um, popped up in high traffic hotspots in the downtown area to promote, to promote the test drives. It created buzz as well as helped build their database of smart fans by dispensing a smart reservation queue for about room, one room and B. And more than 5,000 people experienced those test drives. And then came launch time. And here are some of the images from the unveiling of the exhibition in the car itself.
But it didn't stop there. The video content created during the campaign was uploaded documentary style and YouTube views mounted in the thousands. The case also demonstrates a rising trend of note. At this year's South by Southwest Festival, observers dubbed 2012 the year of visual storytelling. Not only Facebook, but also Pinterest, Instagram, Path, and similar social tools are flourishing this year because of their focus on visual storytelling. And to that, uh, add to that the continuing surge in online video and the exploding use of infographics and motion graphics, and the trend is clear. 2012 will be defined by visual storytelling. I'm sure all of you are really clued into what Pinterest is, um, a digital pin board where you can post videos and photos of things that you like or things that, or things that you've created or things that you saw online that you really like and want to show people. Um, Pinterest is now New Zealand's 42nd most visited website, according to the web Ana analytics service Alexa. Um, uh, Flickr, Flickr has been around for many, many years, and it ranks as the 45th site in New Zealand. So you can see what a fast-growing phenomenon um, Pinterest is. And I happened to pick up this, this magazine last night, which all of you probably know is the first time I've had the chance to read it. And there's a uh, column in here by Peter Griffin, and he happens to mention that last week in Wellington, one of the CEOs of a, of a leading creative agency urged an audience of PR people to focus their marketing efforts on more short web-based videos. He said that internet users are basically lazy and time poor. Um, you are better off, therefore, crafting a two to three minute video to get your message across. I don't know if you want to take exception about the lazy part. Unfortunately, he's not here today. Um, but I think that his message is, is absolutely clear. And visual storytelling, as you can see, is a common theme through the success of a lot of these campaigns. Okay. The next business issue, um, how to penetrate a new market after you've saturated your current space. I'm going to point to an example in the, U in the U.S. Um, for well-known brand Bloomberg. After conquering Wall Street as a de facto standard for brokers and bankers when it came to technology and information platforms, Bloomberg set its sights on winning new segments and markets. And one of these targets was the high highly influential Washington, D.C. metro market. Bloomberg aimed to leverage its well-respected brand reputation to launch a new government-focused news and intelligence product, Bloomberg Government. Uh, they had several challenges, mainly Bloomberg lacked awareness and understanding the DC market, and DC is a highly competitive online subscription news marketplace. The solution was tied tightly to the business goals, drive awareness, increase buzz, and create a conversation, and therefore engage with dialogue to create an experience that would lead through sales through bgov.com. We designed and developed an integrated campaign around the launch of the Bloomberg government website. Based on key audience data, the campaign utilized print, video, experiential, mobile, paid search, radio, online advertising, and social media to capture DC attention. The execution took a full peso approach. Paid media um, on premium online display, banner ads on WSJ.com, WashingtonPost.com, LinkedIn, paid search, own media included branded brochures, sales sheets, radio advertising. They used videos targeted at key audiences incorporating customer uh, testimonials. There was a mobile marketing um, element to it and QR codes on all the print um, advertising. And it was also experiential using building projection on high traffic areas such as Union Station. And they tied this to analytics so that they were flexible and make real-time adjustments. So here's an example of effective brand and shared media presence that BGov used across four social media platforms. And you can notice the, the unity of look and feel um, for the brand across all communications. I asked Kathy Baer, who captained the program in DC, to show you and tell you her own words. The leading highlight from the campaign was uh, actually about a year ago, March 17, 2011, when the product launched in the DC area. Uh, we created a surround sound approach in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> to target the launch um, at Union Station, which is our main uh, train and rail station for Washington. Commuters are coming in to work for government agencies or coming in to work on the Hill. Um, it's the train station where everyone goes from New York to D.C. Um, it's also a really uh, well-trafficked metro station. Um, and we created an event at that station that included some of the sales teams that were giving demonstrations of this product. Uh, we also uh, relied on some out-of-home projections, which were pretty exciting because it's not very D.C., it's very New York, but we don't really do that here. Um, and that included um, kind of true-to-life wall-scale projections that, uh, you know, basically surrounded the entire area where our commuters were kind of coming in and out of the train station and out into the subway. Um, and we used mobile tactics. So 
So as a result of the campaign, Bloomberg saw a dramatic increase in qualified sales leads. Their effective cost per lead dropped 54%, their page views increased 104%, and there was solid performance in search channels. Finally, I'm going to share a case that demonstrates how to keep relevant with fresh uh, storytelling content in the wash of new media channels. As a leader in sports nutrition, Gatorade has had a very strong presence for many, many years within America's endurance community by offering nutrition and hydration products that are utilized in training and on course. With a array of new products developed through their, their own Gatorade Sports Science Institute, it was time for the brand to make some noise and take an active lead in the endurance community. The focus of the campaign was its new G, G Series Pro product line and raising awareness in the very niche highly influential endurance market. We created a fully integrated online engagement platform called Inside Endurance, a weekly documentary style program following amateur athlete Ryan Suter as he completed in, competed in four different, very, very different endurance races. Ryan worked with Gatorade Sports Science Institute to figure out how his body functioned and how he could improve his performance through proper sports nutrition. Elite athletes provided training to help overall help him improve the overall performance and also viewers as well. The Gatorade Mission Control Team utilized Facebook to analyze existing endurance conversations to drive an engagement strategy with the community and to influence program content development. Ryan's progress was detailed on the Gatorade Facebook site, including partner pages, as he pushed to better his best in each race. His results were shared amongst fans that rallied and supported him throughout the series, including sharing their own personal endurance tips. And the page had a shareable inside endurance widget, featuring series content that was optimized to live, expand, and fully function within Facebook news feeds, mobile phones, and blogs. So let's watch. Gatorade has been a staple of endurance races for years. But in 2011, the brand wanted to establish itself as the go-to sports nutrition resource for endurance athletes. Our solution was to go inside endurance with a fully integrated engagement platform that would put Gatorade to the test. Gatorade had to authentically demonstrate why its G-Series Pro product line should be an integral part of an endurance athlete's training. We challenged one amateur athlete to compete in four very different, but equally grueling, endurance events. We documented this journey through an engaging weekly web series and supporting bonus content. Our cameras followed every stroke, every pedal, and every stride, capturing the challenges endurance athletes face day in and day out. use social media to engage athletes in the online communities where they turn for training advice. In the end, Gatorade proved to the endurance community that it's time for athletes to stop training harder and start training smarter. Your training needs to be focused, your nutrition plan needs to be focused, and that's where you're going to see your improvement.
And as the economists predicted, it is changing the media industry, industry and the society as a whole. All businesses must adapt. In our industry, Fletch and Hillard is adapting too. We realize that digital integration today is table stakes, and as a PR agency and as an industry, we need to go beyond. To say the world has changed is to make a massive understatement. It's been utterly transformed. All old definitions no longer apply. If the 24-7 broadcast yourself, everyone behind the curtain on demand entertain me, I won't be sold the world these days. What others say about you is now louder than what you say about yourself. All this change has turned the marketing communications into one huge jump ball. The lines between disciplines are blurred. Everyone is in the same business. Companies want integrated thinking, period. And they want more of it from fewer partners. While staying true to our DNA, Fletcher and Hiller has also transformed. Getting ink is only one small part of a much larger equation these days. Today, we have the capabilities to talk with every audience, using every channel, across every discipline. Here are just a few tidbits from the I Bet You Didn't Know This file. At Fleischman Hiller, we have 248 digital specialists in 42 offices around the world, 74 designers, 54 technologists. We launched a mobile app every month this year. We have five digital production studios. We have award-winning writers, directors, and filmmakers on staff. We're the digital AOR for these companies, and we're the social AOR for these companies. We have placed over $100 million in paid media in the past year alone. And our multidiscipline, through the line, multi-channel creative thinking is moving our clients' businesses forward in powerful ways around the world. We launched Bika for Bloomberg. We drove awareness for ADP. In the Asian Pacific, our work for GTX put that trend on the express track. In Europe, we built and managed eight professional communities for Phillips with four active subgroups containing thousands of members each. We launched the iPhone 4. We found world-class talent from Novartis. We blew up the definition of performance for Gatorade. So what's the bottom line? Flash and Hood? We do so much more than the old definition of public relations. Our goal? Complete command, strategically and across all channels. Our vision? To be the fully integrated, evolved, strategic communications consultancy of the future. Our commitment? To be our client's most trusted and valued partner create a measurable impact on business performance. Flashman Miller, more than 60 years old and just getting started. So once again, on behalf of Flashman Miller and our partner in New Zealand, 11PR, thank you very much for allowing me to share these stories today. And I look forward to answering